Hello YouTube and welcome to Appium Automation Basics Part 3. In the previous video we have created a Hello World program and you probably saw me use UI Automator Viewer. Uh, so in today's video we're going to talk about uh, UI Automator Viewer, UI selectors and how you can chain UI selector properties together using primary and secondary selectors. So here we have UI Automator Viewer. And basically, this is just a tool that allows you to peek at the UI element that you see on the screenshot here. And it lets you browse its properties, okay? And you can use these properties in your um, automation scripts to interact with all these elements. So UI Automator Viewer uses ADB to take XML layouts and map them to, a screen to uh, screenshots like this one. So if something is not working when you click this button to take a screenshot, if you get an error, uh, make sure to double check that your ADB is working properly. So once you take the screenshot, you actually can save it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just save my screenshot to desktop. And that should generate two files on my desktop. If I go to my desktop right now, I'm going to see two files. There's a PNG, which is the screenshot itself, and then UIX, which is the XMA layout. So I can then share these files if I, if say, I work with uh, a team of people and I want to share this with them I can do it or I can just reuse these files later uh, without having my device plugged in. So to open this files layer you have to specify the screenshot that you want to map the XML layout to and you have to specify the XML layout file itself. And then when you click open it's going to open this screenshot. So now let's take a look at the layout of this tool. On the left, we have a screenshot with XML elements mapped out. And on the top right here, we have the XML layout in the raw form. And on the bottom right, we have the, um, all the properties of the selected element. If we examine the available UI selector properties, we see that there are a bunch of Boolean properties and some string properties, okay, like here. The string properties I like to call the primary properties and the Boolean properties I like to call secondary properties. In most cases, you will not need to use secondary properties. As a rule of thumb, you want to use resource ID as your first choice, text or content description as your second choice. There will be some cases where you will need to use secondary properties. For example, um, if we want to click this switch, right? So if I want to turn off Wi-Fi. I need to be precise that I want to click on a switch that's turned on. But how do we know that the switch is turned on or off? Well, we can use Boolean property checked. Okay, let's go to a project that we created in the previous video. And I will show you how you can chain the properties. So I made some changes to this project, but don't worry about it. Just worry about these two parts. So let's come over here and take a look at the resource ID of the switch. So it's com Android settings ID switch widget. That's exactly what we have here. But that's not enough, right? We need to tell the script that we're looking for the switch that's on. Okay, so we can use a Boolean property checked. 
true. Okay, and the way we can chain it in a script, we can come over here and we can say checked true. Okay, now we told the script that we're looking for UI selector that has resource ID of such and it's checked. So when we fire up a script, it's going to find the switch. For example, if I turn it off and I take the screenshot again, I just turned off the switch on my device and I'm taking a screenshot, this checked property will be false. So that basically tells our script whether the switch is on or off. And that's how we can chain the properties together. By the way, you can chain uh, primary properties and secondary properties as much as you want. Basically, you can chain multiple primary properties. For example, you can have resource ID, you can have text here as well. You can have content description. This will work, okay? Just make sure that the element actually has those properties because right now if I fire up this, uh, my script, it's not gonna find this because I just made up these properties. Okay, so when you specify them, make sure your uh, UI element actually has those properties. <clears throat> there are a couple more properties, uh, string properties or primary properties that are not shown in UI Automated Viewer. For example, we have description contains property that we can use, which is basically specifies the text that you're looking for in a string. So it doesn't have to be exact string, it's just this text has to be in the string. And if it's there, then it's gonna use this element. You can also use uh, property description matches. And this property takes in a regular expression. And if you don't know what regular expressions are, I recommend you read up on it because they're very powerful, but it's a very large topic and I'm not gonna cover it in this video because it's outside of the scope of this video. So we also have text contains, okay? Like here, here we have off. If I say text contains O, then it will still find this. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to discuss XPaths and how to construct XPaths using UI Automated Viewer. They're very powerful and we definitely need to know how to do it. So check out my next video, take care, like this video, and thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.